YouTube what is good right here and today we've got an absolute banging video for you so we're going to be looking at the LNG history in Warzone going from Warzone 1 all the way to the present day tell me in the comments what's been your favorite LNG to use in Warzone and if you like the video make sure you leave a like let me know you enjoy this type of content and I'll catch you next time can we find Warzone something in here that I've actually forgot about yeah, that tack before we start that tack was insane guys what was your favorite LNG meta I, I like the Bruin it was that was it the mg in caldera that was pretty insane and i did like this tack evolver as well the fast fire rate one I'm uh, but i wonder what else is in here if there's anything i forgot about or was there any absolute sleepers hey, join me as we take a look at the entire history of lmgs in warzone i'd get, at those meta -defining guns as always, so if I didn't like that one stay tuned to the end where i'll go over some honorable mentions go ahead and comment your favorite lmg in warzone of all time there it is, the big boy Bruin. The, list of LMGs the, with the OG Bruin, which LMG. Is one of, if not the very first DLC gun added to Warzone. I know that a lot of people love this gun, but for me, it was the very first actually broken gun in Warzone. What I mean by that, it was one of these guns that if the you Bruin. weren't using, you were at a severe disadvantage and you would just lose most of your gunfights. Also, I think the whole point of an LMG is to be slow and heavy, but hit very hard to offset the lack of mobility. Well, the Bruin had the mobility of an SMG, but hit like an yep. LMG. The Bruin had the. Like mag on it didn't it had like a 60 mag on the side so it was more like an ar than an actual lmg mobility which is i think also what made it very good which makes absolutely no sense the meta build was to use the 60 round magazine which only took <clears> two <throat> seconds to reload which was yet another advantage it's had of not only other lmgs but all the long if you hear me sniffing as well guys i'm sorry i've got a, a sickness recoil, which made i'm infected at the moment in every single category which has just never happened especially with an lmg there is a theory saying that dlc guns were always made overpowered on purpose to drive battle pass sales up and this being the first one of all time kind of supports that claim man just seeing the dance clips makes me realize how much i miss the dance we need it back bro we need it back what's the mg34 was that called it no it wasn't list, potentially what's this all of Warzone. mg34 was an lmg that got totally swept under the radar for i don't no really remember reason. this possibly the most balanced yet efficient lmg of all time it fell between the two of the larger lmg metas in Warzone. with the fastest ttk throughout all of verdansk it was balanced with an awkward recoil and terrible mobility as an lmg should have there were a lot of ground loot variants running around verdansk so it wasn't uncommon to use it and did a good job was this, was this good i don't remember this at you all to run in a loadout even though it was really good as you far know as what? i know this wasn't hit with any major i'm sorry i keep talking you know what i look at lng actually loved and it might not even be in this it depends was it the ls the original lsw i think it was called in Verdansk. basically what the lsw is now or the org but in Verdansk. i used to love so that i don't know why i had a soft spot for one. it Thin wasn't anything special on its own, but that all changed when you threw on the, the chainsaw, stock, which completely transformed the Bruh, gun. Turning the thing into a about this. mini gun, it became one of the most customizable guns we've ever seen in Warzone. Having several barrels to choose from, you could use it as a short range room clearer or a long range hip fire like that's like this is like conversion kits before conversion kits existed choose from you could use it as a short range room clearer or a long range hip fire like build chainsaw attachment also gave it an ads unlike any other gun kind of like a hybrid between the canted laser sight attachment and also tax stance we have today but not quite identical to either pretty sure this is the only attachment that has this ads effect in all of warzone give the fin a pat on the back for being another very balanced addition to warzone although you had a lot of customization to it there wasn't a build that completely dominated the meta by any means but if you want I don't remember the fin being that one of the funnest guns you could ever use. Here we have an LMG added towards the end of Cold War's life cycle that this, was the Bruin reincarnated. This was insane on Caldera. The MG82 this was, was so good. I don't, I don't remember it in Verdansk. I don't remember using it in Verdansk. Was shredding lobbies nonstop. I say negative recoil because it had such Slapped in Caldera though. Unless there was something so else very similar. To and took a lot of getting used to. Seriously felt like the barrel was moving down instead of up. Unlike the Bruin, the mobility on this gun was actually bad. Like oh my god, what's his shots be, back? So that kind of helped its cause a little bit however the mg82 also supported an insane 150 round magazine which might be the biggest mag that wars i really don't remember it in maybe the dance has 200 or was it buff maybe in caldera compare this with the already mentioned insane fire rate zero recoil and throw on a crazy damage and hit scan velocity and you had another <laughs> unforgettable lmg what are they doing sure the mg82 was also one of the most short-lived metas that warzone has ever seen it was hit with nerfs only a few weeks after it hit the shelves but even after its nerf this thing went on to be 
bullet. And not a bad ground loot gun to tide you over. <laughs> you don't get lobbies like this anymore. The brand. The Bren was the so good, bro. Where we kicked things off with one of the most broken LMGs in Warzone. The Bren was as close as you could get to the Bruin for the sole fact that I, I, I love you, Miss Caldera. Let's meet. This gun was Takes pretty me much back. AR in every regard, aside from its damage, in the same exact way as the Bruin. Before I started using the Bren, I was very hesitant because 40 rounds for a long-range primary just doesn't seem like enough. But it's TTK and accuracy being so good, you could easily get the kill in 15 bullets or less. And if you didn't, well, the reload was lightning fast, so your time between engagements didn't really matter all that much. Since this was at the forefront of the meta at the beginning of the Vanguard integration, it gave us a taste of what was to come with zero recoil, high damage, 10 detachments, and easy to use guns. Oh, there we are. Low key under I completely it. forgot about this oh, gun, which this is gun. kind of surprised because of how weird was never it was. a fan. The DP27, or also known as the Pizza Gun, was the second LMG to Right, it looks like it's got a, a, a vinyl. What? Like the music vinyls. Is that what they're called? Little disc to play music. Looks like it's got one of them on it. since it supported a 105 round magazine or play. I honestly don't even know what to call it. Also, no recoil made it one of the best long range options we have ever seen that could outgun a sniper if used correctly. Unlike the Brandon Bruin, its mobility wasn't the greatest, but seriously, didn't matter what they were. Oh, they were forgave such nice skins anyways. as well. There's also a muzzle and barrel that increased the rate of fire, but didn't do much of anything to the recoil, so that was pretty much just a TTK booster when you think about it. Following the Vanguard train, it was super easy to use which made for another unstable LMG that, if I remember correctly, didn't last very long and definitely was overshadowed by the Bren since they were around the same time. I don't know what this is. What was said about the DP-27 can also be said about the UGM-8. Oh, I remember this. Here, super long range. Okay, I'm getting mixed up. I do remember the other... Good in Cal in Badansk. I was getting mixed up with this for some reason. 25 round magazine, no recoil, easy to use, 10 attachment, blah, blah, blah. You know by now the whole Vanguard special going on here. This is yet another gun that I think got overshadowed only because this was really good. This, this was really powerful, this LMG. Kind of falling off the hype train at that time. I know I definitely wasn't nearly as involved in the game solely because the Vanguard meta had overtaken Warzone and became way less fun. Anyways, this is, I guess, what you could call the definitive meta for the remainder of Warzone 1 until Warzone 2. Yeah, the RPK met and here the we king are. meta Warzone for two, as long as... RPK would steal the show for potentially oh, it's the for far too long. we have ever seen in Warzone. The RPK was the one-stop shop, and it was a gun that you could either kit out to be a super slow, long-range LMG, or a more AR approach for the mid-range engagements. In a game with visual recoil, I personally enjoyed the long-range approach, and it was honestly a very fun period of time running this at launch of Warzone It wasn't too Throwing bad still, to be honest with you. And then kitting this thing out for recoil quickly been a made lot it the worse. undeniable best primary in the game at the time, and it wasn't even close. Since this was before Resurgence was in the game, you had to be running this with no question. I think it took three separate rounds of nerfs to get where it is today, which is absolutely <laughs> useless. However, this is one of my all-time favorite metas while it lasted. The second, the second. After the RPK's nerf into oblivion, a I never, I never to the plate, being really the used the second. Felt like an LMG in that it had little recoil. I think at this time I probably just stopped damage, playing. Instead of excelling in all of those, like where was this meta? On this list. Had a hundred default round magazine that felt necessary for this kit as well. This meta coincided with the launch of Ashika Island and was quickly the best primary to run oh, at the time. Oh, I was playing then. Maybe I was using was. something else. The drawback was its reload speed being horrendous, but since you had a hundred rounds, that didn't really even matter. Also, yet another one of my favorite metas. Here we have another one of the more balanced options on this list being the RAL LMG. The RAL was first introduced in Warzone 1, but was pretty useless. But the Warzone 2 version was much better and focused more so on the <laughs> raw damage well, yeah. output and absolutely nothing else. You could kit out for recoil as much as you wanted, but it was never going to be smooth sailing. All you had to do was hit your shots, though. Its mobility was potentially the worst on this entire list. I think one thing that does make this one a little bit more balanced is how much visual shape there is. But when you it's definitely not as beamy had all your eggs into the damage basket that's just another thing you were not worried about with one of the cleanest iron sights of all time i personally forewent the optic in place of more recoil control because this thing just needed all the help it could get in that regard i also wouldn't be surprised if this had the highest damage per shot of every single gun on this list holy mama what, what is this now we're at war zone three where if you have oh okay oh, the pulling me up bro you 
Well, they might have goated. by now has goated. essentially revolved entirely around LMGs. Honestly, getting kind of old. Anyways, as a part of Modern Warfare 3, we got the conversion kits, and the Pulley Mods conversion kit is probably the best conversion kit we've ever seen in Warzone. Instead of making a gun that's like an AR, but still an LMG, that's just what the conversion kit did for you automatically. Staying in the meta for a while, and arguably still to this day, the Pulley Mod was another... But see, the Pulley Mod was so clean to use. It was nice. ...sounds to go along with it. What? Warzone went downhill High when damage, this got nerfed. Crazy mobility, we got nothing now. Warzone with no visual recoil made for one of the best metas to kick off Warzone 3. Like I said, it's still very much so a great option today, even after a couple nerfs, but definitely not as good as it once was. It's always nice to see a gun still be viable even after it's had its time in the meta. Ooh. The Eradicator was another great option that was present simultaneously with the Pulley Mod. Although there wasn't really any reason to use the Eradicator over the Pulley, it was still one of the best LMGs we have ever seen in Warzone and definitely was overshadowed because of the Pulley. I guess the only argument for it was that it's I wasn't a big fan of this. classic Scar Iron Sight that we know and love, but other than that, this was pretty much an honorable mention. Fun fact, the Urzikstan kill record was made with this gun. Honestly, I don't know why the Attack Evolver exists because it's like... What is... Is that a blueprint? I was about to say the the tack with the five five six ammo, so it shoots faster. That was so good in ranked. The fifth scarlet gun we have in the game. Anyways, the gun on its own was a decent mid range option, but nothing to write home about. However, it's the tack stance hip fire build I really want to showcase this one. here. With potentially one of the craziest setups in all of Warzone, this build was melting lobbies and had the highest TTK in the game by a landslide. Aside from its TTK and easy to use build, the really broken aspect going on here was its strafe and movement <laughs> speed. I swear this has to be faster than any SMG we've ever had in all of Warzone history. Legit felt like you were playing Doom in. Warzone. I'm not sure what sick bastard created this build in the first place or how it was discovered, but definitely one of the weirdest phenomenons in Warzone history and kind of gave Finn chainsaw vibes. This was also one of the shortest lived guns in Warzone. I kid you not. Yeah, they nerfed this so like quick, didn't they? Two before they spanked it with nerfs. Okay, this DG was nice. It wasn't overpowered, so it was just good. This video, which is what you need. Only LMG that could turn into a full-blown SMG with its conversion kit, but not in the same way as the Evolver. DG58 quickly became the number one oh, SMG with its Jack build. Nightshade conversion kit, giving it the highest TTK in the game. I'm not sure how this made it into servers because it genuinely wasn't even close and actually felt like you were being one-shot by a sniper when you got trampled by this thing. Instead of some niche hipfire attack stance build, the Nightshade AMP was broken just the way it was with no secret attachments to make it like this it also the range built the range I mean, um like normal of version of this was time. nice and had it been around for longer this without a doubt would have been the best sniper support we've ever seen in warzone Similarly, like evolver, this also became one of the fastest patched items we have ever seen with only being like this for like two or three days if that however that was just the beginning of the dg's run since the base lmg would be the number one yes. long range gun in all of warzone for the next two or so months with little recoil and same velocity high damage decent mobility Ability, this was another LMG with most of the benefits of an AR. This was simply the best long range fully automatic gun in the game. And it, it wasn't, wasn't overpowered though, as well. Means that for a period of time, the DG it was just good. Was the best they should have pushed everything to the standard of the DG58. The, the damage multipliers didn't do anything to the overall TTK, so it took another wave of nerfs to eventually put this thing in the dirt. And now we're at the point where there's no nice metas. I do the Hogan 26, which is just ass. Everything just ass now. From here on out. Now we're where the current meta stands with the Holger 26. I don't really have much to say about the Holger other than it's pretty much just the same as the DG58. Seriously, in almost every regard, this is the exact same gun. Recoil, damage, mobility, velocity. It all just feels the same. In Warzone 3, we're pretty much at the state where LMGs have rendered ARs obsolete, which is kind of boring in my opinion. In Warzone 1, that's all it really was, but now we've only seen like one or two decent ARs thrown into the mix, and even then, the LMGs still beat them in every way. I hope before Black Ops 6 we can get some meta changes, but until then, the long-range metas for Warzone 3 have yeah. become very stale to me. But what are your thoughts? Is the LMG meta getting boring? Also, what's your favorite LMG of all time? Also, a couple honorable mentions I want to go through. The Stoner 63, the PKM, the MG42, and the Rap H. If you think there's another one that should have been on this list, go ahead and comment it down below. But if you like this and want to watch me break down shotguns, snipers, pistols, or other types of guns, 
It's weird looking back at how much LMGs have dominated Warzone in the last year or so compared to prior. It's actually mental to think about. But guys, if you liked the video, leave a like, let me know, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.